So hypopituitarism. This is a problem of insufficient production of hormones from the anterior pituitary gland. So just to review, what were the hormones that we released from the anterior pituitary gland? Remember, we said there were six of them to remember. ACTH, TSH, FSH, LH, growth hormone, prolactin. Okay. So this problem is when your pituitary gland, your anterior pituitary gland has a problem and it's not making hormones, you get decreased of all this stuff and you get problems. So there's going to be a lot of etiologies here. So let's get into it. First etiology is a pituitary adenoma or a craniopharyngioma in children. And these cause hypopituitarism because they're going to cause compression of normal tissue. And so that normal tissue is not going to work. So like I said, this is the pituitary gland. You get a tumor here. I drew this already. And you get pituitary adenoma in adults and a craniopharyngioma is what you see in kids. Tumor compression causes atrophy and these cells don't work, they don't make hormones. Next is Sheehan syndrome. This is an infarction of the pituitary gland after postpartum bleeding. This is our anterior pituitary gland, poorly drawn. Now, during pregnancy, your pituitary gland is going to increase in size. Okay, You have all these extra hormones to make, so your pituitary gland increases in size. Size, but your blood supply, this is your blood supply, is going to remain the same. So you have a bigger gland, you have more tissue, you have more oxygen demand, but your blood supply is the same. So what's going to happen? You're going to be more susceptible to hypoperfusion. And guess what happens in pregnancy, during during birth? You get bleeding. Okay, you get bleeding is super common during birth, and so if you get postpartum bleeding, you can get hypoperfusion, and because you're going to be increased susceptibility to infarcts because of this, this mismatch between them, increased tissue and the same amount of blood supply. So you're gonna infarct, okay, there's not, let's say infarct, 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 and what's gonna happen? Again, you're gonna get, you're gonna get these symptoms from these, these hormones, you're also gonna get some special symptoms, because what happens after you deliver a baby? What do you need to do for the baby? You need to feed them, you need to lactate, and so what was the hormone here? Prolactin. So if you have decreased prolactin, what's going to happen? You're not going to be able to lactate. So you see a patient coming to you, postpartum, in it, unable to lactate, tells you a story of them, lots of significant bleeding during pregnancy. It's probably Sheehan syndrome causing a hypobituitarism. They're also going to get they're going to get things like failure of menstruation, and they're going to get rest of the symptoms. Okay, so that's Sheehan syndrome. And I just talked about this. So next is pituitary apoplexy. What is pituitary apoplexy? This is an acute intrapituitary hemorrhage. Let's draw it again. So we have an adenoma here. So adenoma, so remember, tumor is always more vascular. Okay. So this patient is going to get an inch acute hemorrhage within the pituitary gland. And this is an acute thing. So you're going to get a sudden onset headache by temporal hemianopsia. Then you get hypopituitary um, symptoms. So if you see this and hypopituitary syndrome, your answer is pituitary apoplexy. And you know that this this makes sense because it's an acute problem, acute hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, you get a hematoma or something. It's going to ca cause blockage of that, that optic chiasm that we talked about. You get that mass effect symptoms. Finally, we get empty cella syndrome. So this is caused by atrophy or compression of the pituitary gland by herniation of the arachnoid and the CSF. So this is how it normally is. And this is this is like bone and stuff. But this is our cella turcica, okay? This whole area here is our cella turcica. That's where the, this is where our pituitary glands are held or housed. Okay, and we have this arachnoid the pia mater, arachnoid mater, we have the CSF surrounding it. And if you get herniation, it's gonna lead to this. You get herniation of the of the arachnoid, herniation of the CSF, and what's going to happen? Your anterior pituitary is going to be get compressed here. It's going not it's not going to work very well, as you can see, as you can imagine. And what you're going to see is on imaging, your cella turcica is going to appear empty because it's filled with CSF. With CSF is fluid, you don't see fluid on the imaging. 
Okay, so that's empty cellar syndrome. So these are all causes of hypopituitarism. You want to know all these causes. These are all high yield. Pituitary adenoma. Sheehan syndrome is if it's postpartum. Pituitary apoplexy. You get that sudden onset severe headache and bitemporal hemianopsia. And then empty cellar syndrome is when it's this. Compression, atrophy of the pituitary gland from herniation. So clinical features. Again, it all just goes back to all these hormones that the pituitary gland makes. You're going to understand more of this later. So, but this is the syndromes you're going to see. I wouldn't recommend you to memorize this, but you're going to understand what all these do. You're going to understand what ACTH, what cortisol does. You're going to understand what thyroid hormone does and how hypothyroidism presents. And then this one we covered over and over again. Remember we said that in hyperprolactinemia, we saw the same thing where you get GnRH inhibition and then thus FSH, LH deficiency. Again and again, you see amenorrhea, infertility in women, infertility, and loss of libido in men. So this is easy. You already know this. Okay. And this stuff you're going to learn later when we talk about cortisol and when we talk about thyroid. So that's hypopituitarism.